that was a workout. This is a great piece. It's a great concerto. I love the fact that it, it's only one movement, and within one movement, it has so much variety. Yes, this is a student concerto, but it also can be played as a proper piece with an orchestra, uh, as a proper concerto. So, hope you enjoy learning it. What I like as well about this concerto is it has this great tooth at the beginning, and then when the beginning, the beginning of the violin happens, it's from the very beginning, from the first note. You're kind of engaging already with that kind of voice of a concerto that maybe something like the Bruch might have at the beginning. In fact, it's, I think it's very inspired by that. Um, being in a, in a minor, it doesn't have too many complications within intonation as in keys, but of course, as every other piece, it will be tricky to play to play beautifully and in tune. And there are some sections that we need to look at, but basically, I think it's a, it's a good student concerto to really show off uh, that concerto sound. Um, one thing to have throughout the piece, in general, is to have the, the bow near the bridge. Even if you play with the pianist, make sure that you project nicely. But we'll talk about different colors later. Now, for the very, very beginning, we've got quite a lot of notes um, to make with the big sound. So make sure that we don't use too much bow at the beginning. So that we can come off afterwards. And then more afterwards. So I'm thinking. On the Eastern Trotty is more bow. Stop, they're not very complicated, just making sure they're in tune, especially. We go on the A string and the D string. Uh, there will be more double stops at the end, but they're not particularly difficult, they're in A major at the ending, so. We got this saltanto. It needs to be very close to the string. We just want it just off the string. That needs to be on the string. And then we go to this slow section, which since we don't have a slow movement, this will be the one. It's a great place to work on expression, colors, and legato, and obviously phrasing as well. Diminuendo, but continue all the way to here. Next, same thing. the different contact points to have a different sound or different dynamics. Um, we don't definitely don't want to have that forte that we had at the beginning. We want I quite like to start with a sound that is on the string, not too flautado, not too 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 much bow, but it can change as we use different parts, um, different strings and different parts of the phrase. So at the end... To disappear. We can disappear in that um, more interesting sound, more vel velvety sound. Everything nice and tight. Especially those um, semitones as well. Very tight. It reminds me very much of great concertos like Paganini and other romantic concertos that have that bel canto, that Italian singing operatic um, voice in it. So it's, I think it's, it captures it in, in a few bars. It's great. 
Now we go to the next faster section. Nothing major apart from apart from being in C major. Those accents are important to get them with the vibrato and with the bow. And the same thing in piano, exactly the same. Good, then we go to the recap, which is very much the same, just probably a little bit quieter. And we go to the new section. Now, when I work this with students, I always tell them to listen to the melody first. Try to phrase that phrase. And then the rest, like I was playing now, just very soft. So different pressures, different weights in the bow will get that. Um, effect of different voices. Of course, the more we go on, the more it grows. It says forte, but don't start too loud because we need to do crescendo. time is the same tune but in A major which I think is a it has a different color and I like to 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 use a different vibrato for that as well as keeping it on the A string apart from that ending I think it has a nicer sound than the E string for me it's too bright. I like that more tender sound, more more like a having a hug. I quite like that a bit. Um, another faster section, this time is just fitting lots of notes in one bow. This one. So just practicing it first without the bowings. Opportunity to get the notes. But when we get the bowings, trying to fit all those notes and then with the crescendo. So using less ball at the beginning to then open up and then close. Um, nothing new again. Accents. Sometimes I prefer to do it without the harmonic. Just depends how I'm feeling on, the, on that on that day. And finally, what I would say for for the whole of this piece, it's nothing really difficult. It's just getting everything correct and getting each section with the right color that will make and the right sound, so that will make. Uh, difference when you're playing it. It's like a collage of different sections, like a jigsaw, and having each one very colorful will make it a lot more interesting. And I think that's what makes this piece a, a real concerto when it's played like that. Otherwise it just sounds like a student concerto, which nothing wrong with it, it's just very simple. So it's nice to have that extra quality in the sound, in the projection, in the colors, that it will make a big difference. So I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please 
make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button so that there's more more videos like these are, are coming up and you won't miss any of them <laughs>